Hey everyone, it's Lauren and Lena from Spoodcast, and today we have Juice from Juice's Arthropods. Yeah. Okay, that's like my first time saying that word out loud. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's totally fine. I get it all the time on, on expos. They will put me as Juice's Anthropods, as Juice's Ants. They, so it's totally fine. I feel like there's so many like consonants in there that like the R just disappears. That was actually my goal. I wanted to make it so impossible that you couldn't forget it. I love Ooh. it. That's a joke. I didn't actually do that. That would just, but that would be genius, right? But it would be so like catchy. I really like that. That's a good yeah. thing. Can you tell if people don't know what an arthropod is? It's not like, you know, Arthur. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> <laughs> yep, it's Arthur. No, uh, an arthropod is an invertebrate that has armored. So, like anything that has like bends and creaks, like an armored invertebrate is an arthropod. So, mm. what it isn't is like a gastropod, which would be like snails or mollusks and things like that. So most most life on the earth is is an arthropod. Most invertebrate you know are arthropods. As well. I learned nice. something new today. Okay, bye. <laughs> that was it show's over <laughs> nice that's so cool like i've been seeing roly-poly actually my son we i made him a little enclosure with roly-polies so that was like my first thing that popped in mind when you said like the little armor yeah and they it's something to do with their legs too and i can't i can't remember the wikipedia definition <laughs> but, but no like it, it encompasses everything from you know crabs and crustaceans to you know, or arachnids and all those things too. So it's it's probably everything you guys own as pets would be arthropod. Not my cat. Yeah, as a cat. That's true. Well, Komodo dragons are in Jersey, so I would <laughs> believe that cats are arthropods. Yeah, let me rephrase. Invertebrates. <laughs> those your pet invertebrates. Not your not your man. What's your favorite kind? I I think my favorite kind is definitely roaches. I'm a big roach guy. Um, really, my eyes went really big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I love roaches because of five thousand species of roaches. Only fifteen of them are actually invasive capable, and Ooh. they're just. I, I'm always that guy that really loves like the underdog. Like if you start <laughs> winning, I lose interest in you pretty quickly. <laughs> so like I really like roaches because I feel like they're really misunderstood, and termites are roaches, which is pretty pretty interesting too aren't mm. roaches like something to do also with the spider family or no 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 oh. well they they are they're all under arthropods in that realm there's the phy phylogenetic tree of arthropods is insane like it, it encompasses basically every armored exoskeleton type invertebrate you'll see um, okay like tarantulas jumping yes. spiders what about stick bugs? So phasmids would still be under that category oh. because so you actually have Megalomorphe, which is the overarching. I, I don't know if it's called a kingdom or, or what it's called, but that is underneath arthropods. So you have Chalicerata and all of these and it's yeah, hmm. you can you could talk for literally hours on the phylogenetic tree of how arthropods are determined. It's always really funny to me because like people will eat crabs and they'll eat shrimp, but then they will really hate bugs. And I'm like, you know, really, they're, the, they're like cousins. <laughs> yeah, they're just sea bugs. That's all they are. <laughs> yeah, like aren't what do the people eat a lot? The sea bugs, they call them or crawfish. Don't they call those like just like sea roaches? No, yeah, those are from lakes and shit, right? In rivers and they're in pretty much, I think, any fresh water river, right? Yeah. My knowledge ends at the water's edge. <laughs> That's yeah. Not my knowledge died. I know. I'm from Colorado. I don't understand oceans, but I guess <laughs> now I sort of live by one. Oh, dude, they did a thingy because I'm in South Jersey and our little shore is Wildwood and. I guess they cleaned it up and it's just full of used tampons. So that's what we have. Yeah. <laughs> Is there a sub pump that people are fucking their tampons? <laughs> no, just like at the beach, somebody's like, you know what? I don't want this in me anymore. And they're just like, splatter. Sorry, Juice. <laughs> no, you're fine. So in medical kits, you'll typically keep them in there because they're really good for gunshot wounds. Yeah. With all of the sanitary pads and stuff why don't they make you know like how they have like what the hell are those called like when when oil spills happen why don't they just reuse these things for oil spills like because it's not like it's gonna break down it's cotton you know what i mean like can't we just like ring it out reuse it give it a yeah that's a menstrual cup 
I make a menstrual cup hide for drunk oh. spiders. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I, I will be honest, as a man, I know nothing about menstrual cups because I'm also in my 30s, but I am <laughs> learning. I'm trying to learn new things all the time. So I, but I see those and I'm like, I have no idea how you work, but I'm glad you exist. You know, <laughs> I'm a girl and I still barely know how they work. <laughs> suction. The gravity of it. I was going to say, is it, it's like suction and gravity and I uh, guess <laughs> muscle. Like, I don't know. You got to get it perfect. <laughs> Oh, is it does but, it have to like have a hermetic seal or it becomes like a yes. <laughs> like the scenes of like shining or something yeah the twin scene i do have to tell you guys i read a book about nuclear war and it mentioned scorpions so i saved it as my cool not spider fact do you guys want to see what you think of this it's a paragraph long <clears throat> i highlight it for you Scorpions as a species will likely survive nuclear war. What do you think? But it says arachnida. With book lungs have been around for hundreds of millions of years. Scorpions came before the dinosaurs. They lived through the dinosaurs' extinction and will likely outlive humans. What? After I did not know that. <laughs> yeah, it says after nuclear world war three, they're cheery. The scorpions' hard shells will protect them from the radiation that will kill off most of the humans who managed to initially survive fireball the blast and then the ensuing firestorms oh my god it's like okay you have to watch fallout because there's these creepy like fish characters and i could see scorpions being like the weird humanoid thing in the end not humanoid but maybe because people would probably try to do something weird yeah i thought it was interesting they mentioned that they would live because they have been around for millions of years but like wouldn't they just die in nuclear winter or like a flood well, yeah, there's a couple things with that. So, like when they when they talk about roaches being able to like yeah. like deal with a nuclear blast, right? Like they're not talking about like you're in the blast range. I, I think it's like fifty percent more radiation they can endure than humans, but that's wow. still not much. Like, like yeah. you have to imagine like what was like the Bikini Atoll was like a hundred and forty kilometer explosion. So, like, mm -hmm. let's say something happens with multiple bombs, like all light kind of ceases to exist at a certain amount. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Do you know what the magnetosphere is? No. Okay. I'm trying to <laughs> I'm trying to make this stupid easy. The uh, magnetosphere is basically two two balls of things hit each other okay. controllably. Liquid molten core makes a magnetic shell around the planet. That is what prevents us from being destroyed by the sun. So my problem with their their argument is that they say they've existed before the dinosaurs, so therefore they should survive with a nuclear blast. But like there's a very real difference between a comet hitting a planet and a yeah. nuclear fallout you know what I mean? like, yeah dude, we made that like really brutal like, I don't know. yeah we become carbon so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we kind of melt we, we break down as uh... yeah <laughs> yeah i don't know but i i saved that because i thought it was interesting i guess that's i love curious. That, like if there was a nuclear war like the the scorpions would turn like even more like with radiation like more glowing like would they glow <laughs> <laughs> just glow in your black light. That's my thing, I don't know. Um, we'll have to take them to Spencer's and find out. No, it would be cool though <laughs> if like jumping spiders became like the size of cats. I want you Maybe. to think about that for one second on how mean cats are and then think about jumping spiders. <laughs> <laughs> like Toxic Avenger type of situation. <laughs> That's like normal <laughs> thinking though in my brain. <laughs> I, I love the idea of it so much and I want so badly for there to be. Yeah. No, I look, I, because I've worked so many hours, I've gotten to that point where the idea of like a fallout scenario where like humanity is kind of like half gone. Mm -hmm. is like my vacation. <laughs> you know, you my should read this book. Plan. This book was great. You should read it. It's just called Nuclear War, a Scenario. It's pretty fun. I learned what a nuclear football is. All sorts of stuff. What is that? Do you know what that is, Juice? Yeah, so that's like this little cool briefcase that the president's little doodle friend carries around with him at all times with the nuclear codes in it. Why is yeah. it oh, a nuclear football? Because he's carrying it all the time. Yeah. You got to pass it to the... Yeah. It's actually chained to him like he's a child. There was a point in time where they found out that like the number, like literally this was like just unlocked not too long ago. It was like the password was all ones for like 50 fucking years. Like <laughs> that, that's the <laughs> fuck most, like the most powerful country in the world and their password. <laughs> cats the size of spiders. Wasn't it spiders the size of cats? Oh, did I say that? Yeah. Sorry. Yes. <laughs>
flip it in reverse. Cats the size of spiders would be adorable, first off. Oh and my god, that's can for sure. you imagine? Ah, my mind is like exploding just thinking about that. Most of I the think... problems with cats as like a society would go away overnight. Like what bird could they possibly make extinct, you know? It's just like like walking on the street and seeing like a spider-sized cat that just looked up at you and went, Meow. Is it big enough? <laughs> like you would think just... of, like, your biggest legal. <laughs> they'd still somehow be shitty, you know what I mean? Like they'd still like attack you. You're just like, dude, I'm <laughs> twenty thousand times your size. Go away. <laughs> My cat is the sweetest cat ever and like has never attacked me, like only playful, but he does that thing where they stink and it's awful. I'm (laughs) glad spiders don't have that. Who was it with the stinky spider? One of our guests had a stinky spider. That was Loki's mom. I've never heard of a stinky spider until then. (laughs) Like, is it intentionally stinky or did... (laughs) No, I don't think it's a weapon. I think it just... She said it smells like no matter what it's in, it's just stinky. Was it a boy or girl? Girl. What kind of spider was it? A regal, right? Mm -hmm. Can we can we go back to the fact that you're just eating feta? Like this is what I'm imagining, okay? And I want to tell you how how real this is. I imagine this is the scenario: sitting on like a nice, like a chair, right, or maybe like like a sofa, and you have like a crushed velvet pillow. And in the middle, it's like one of those ones from like the old cat food commercials where they've got like oh, a yeah. open feta container in the middle with like tassels around it. And then you're oh. drinking wine, sipping it gently, and then you're just eating a fistful of feta cheese. That's the reality so is good. that. She's doing a line. <laughs> yeah. You know how horses do that thing with their mouth where they like kind of lip food? I just imagine you just lipping a whole Oh my god. Feta oh, the feta. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I need to break a feta next time. <laughs> I I don't know. I was drinking this wine and I got like this like urge to have something like tangy with it. And then I ate like this big chunk of feta and I was like, that's so one of the best things I've ever had. So that I couldn't stop eating the feta. <laughs> and I'm like, you're not okay. gonna poop. Dude, you're not gonna be able to poop for like a week. <laughs> or you're gonna poop a lot, depending on if you're lactose intolerant. <laughs> Let us know, Lauren. We can go press ways. pause. It will go both ways. <laughs> With that note, so we did menstrual cups, nuclear war, and pooping. Juice, how did you get into <laughs> arthropods? <laughs> so I've been I've been like a bug nerd for about thirty. I'm I'll be thirty eight in July, so about thirty more years now. I got this like old field guide. It was like in hindsight, like the worst gift a human being could give a four year old child. It's like a <laughs> a field guide on like bugs and stuff. And I bought a copy of it recently, and it was like not it was not for kids at all. It's like a, oh, like a professor's field guide. So I was a bug nerd, and then when I got to California around 2020, 2021, I just I started breeding doobie roaches because I have a bearded dragon and he was eating like me out of house and home because he was eating like three dollars a week in roaches. Oh, <laughs> well, those are expensive. So, like, there, yeah, everything here is so expensive. So I just, just like, fuck, can I curse? <laughs> so sorry. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I was like, fuck this. I'm going to just breed these because I know how. So I started doing that. And then I really like roaches and other, and I kind of got, I felt bad because like I was feeding a lot of these roaches and I was kind of like empathizing with them all the time. And then I started getting other stuff and then i don't know (laughs) like spiraled uncontrollably and was just like let's make a business out of this because i know what i'm doing and i have a robust knowledge about the topic became juices arthropods and i tried to make it like different variations i was like what about juices bugs and that already exists and i was like juicy bugs that exists it was like everything i could think oh but there's like bug juice for kids have you seen that (laughs) oh yeah and that's I was like, this will be dope, bug juice. And then it was like the, and there was one of them. Is that the one that's like the barrel fruit juice crap? Yes. Yeah. 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 So they are still like, around? I don't know. That's amazing. Now I got to Google it. Yeah, there's, there's still around. <laughs> Ooh, I'm going to sneeze. So I'm going to mute myself. So I-, I wonder if Lena's a East Coast sneezer or West Coast sneezer. I feel like people from different coasts sneeze differently. They don't sneeze at all. Do you see <laughs> audible noise or do you do the ha-choo? like that Mine crap? Really that much a, Me too. It's why is it's it people thing. with that sneeze always apologize the most for their sneeze? I'm like, dude, this is the least offensive sneeze I've ever heard in my life. Because they peed a little. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't know. Okay. Okay. I'm 
<laughs> that's all I'm going to think about every time going forward. It's just like, they're like, I'm so sorry. I'm like, it's fine. It's just pee. When you see her cross her legs after she sneezes, she's definitely peed a little. I don't know if we can post this at all. <laughs> We're gross. Girls are so gross. Oh, my God. Maybe Did you say girls are gross? Have you been in a men's bathroom ever? <laughs> anyway... Bugs, that's decidedly less gross. I mean, can we get any more weirder? Yes, we can. <laughs> the roaches are funny. I got a bunch for Poodle, my bearded dragon, and I put them in a container to like feed them easy. But I always see them just like humping each other. And I'm like, oh, oh dude, the babies? Darkling beetles, like the mealworm ones, all they do is bone. It's like, dudes, you guys are gross. Cut it out. Yeah, You're not looking at it in the right light, though. If I put you in any container with, oh, you know, it's different people for what is essentially like a fourth of a lifetime, you will also do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, like, they don't live long. So, like, imagine oh, that's if, true. Like, a, if a roach lives a year, I think doobie roaches live two years max. Holy so shit. A week is a really long time in terms of that. You know what I mean? Well, two years is a long time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, they're really long lived. I would have uh, never guessed that. Yeah, I don't yeah, give I, them their fair shot. <laughs> to your point, no one does. And that's that's kind of why I got into this because I was like, it's so arbitrary to me. Like, it's the same thing with like humans. Like, we decide like what is something that's a meal and what thing is a pet. It's the same thing with, with us and roaches. We just decided arbitrarily like which ones we should have our reptiles eat, which ones we shouldn't. So I have a question about yeah. roaches because I'm like very new to roaches. Do the dubia roaches, so I have like large and small, are they just like the small ones, the babies, and they gradually grow up? Or do they actually have like all these different sizes? Yes and no. <laughs> because of how you asked the question. They, they're... <laughs> Hemimetabolism and homometabolism means one of two things. Either it's a species that goes from the, the nymph stage, which is what roaches are, and then they just gradually get to maximum stage, and that's their whole life. They just get, it's like people. They, we have little versions of ourselves that look like old people and like become toddlers, and they look like humans, and then they go on. And then you have the other type, which is like butterflies to, to moths, or, or okay. uh, I'm sorry, caterpillars to moths or, or butterflies. So yeah, when you see dubia roaches of various sizes, you're just seeing them in different infancies or life stages. So like, like if you go to like dubiaroaches.com or whatever, and they have like, like sizes, for instance, or any of those places, what they've mm -hmm. essentially done is they've got somebody that has like a big colander machine, and they put a ton of roaches in it, and then they just shook it. And then like all the ones smaller than that hole fell into a bucket and then they moved to the other side. And even though it was too big, they do it again and all the way down the line. I'm assuming that's how that company does it, but that's what most companies are doing, advising them like that. Or huh. they've got someone meticulously literally holding a tape measure to them, which that seems no. <laughs> <laughs> so. That's awesome to know. I've been like really wondering that because they can get so big. They get it's super funny too, because there are like you ever got you ever seen the lobster roaches? No. So lobster roaches are really great for like I like them for jumping spiders or for arboreal tarantulas, I'll use them. Because okay. they you ever had like a jumper that's just kind of like you're like, dude, you need to eat, and they're kind of yes. like a grumpy dick about it. Um, yeah <laughs> yes lobster roaches are really cool because they will climb plastic and glass and that's not ideal for some people but i love them because i don't want to i have over 1800 different spiders in my house so like if i'm trying to feed stuff like i need you to eat now i don't have time to wait around so i'll throw those into an enclosure like for jumping spiders for instance and they will kind of they'll climb the plastic and glass and they'll run around like a lunatic and then it like <laughs> gets the jumping spider to be like oh movement and like kind of incites them in their their prey drive so yeah i i like those but they're super tiny like you can get I and mean, you've got like giant cave roaches that are the size of my hand like there's a lot of roaches. Uh, well, that's cool though because like mealworms and even dubias like sometimes they just lay there lately mine have been luckily liking the dubias still lena's are, are yours liking dubias yet only one do you, do you have like spiders that just love the dubias I don't get to feed too many dubious to my like I I I do and I don't so like I've got big I got a gramosola polkopies that is a massive tarantula that mm. she's so big that I have to feed her adult dubia roaches because she won't I more specifically have to feed her the giant adult male dubia roaches because the females will won't move around as much and the males are oh kind of really crazy. 
I can't tell the difference. Oh, how do you tell the difference? <laughs> oh, <you're>... nail polish. <laughs> no, they. Well, there's two ways. So f- when they're when they're actually adults, they're sexually dimorphic. So the males will have wings. The females won't with dubia roaches. But for all roaches, if you flip them over, if it has, oh my god, I don't know how to describe this with words. <laughs> if it looks like if you make your hand and you make a U. If the bottom last piece of their abdomen looks like you could fold it up, up and an egg, mm-hmm. ca- an oof could actually come out, that's a female. If it looks like you took your hand and you made a pyramid and it's like sharp at the end, like it kind of like you look at that and you're like, there's no freaking way this thing could give birth. That's the mess. Mm-hmm. And so you can <laughs> you can actually sex roaches at a very early stage to see that. Interesting. I'm gonna huh. try to use mine. Although I'm not gonna lie, I need to get over it, but they still kind of give me the creeps. I'm trying though, like, oh, I don't know. There's something about the roaches. I have a <laughs> trick to it. Oh yeah, what is it? Don't Do make like eye mantids? contact. <laughs> are you are you are you a fan of mantids or praying mantids? Yes. Okay, so they are the same species, just from different lineages. But they don't look as cute <laughs> they look if you look at a man if you look at a roach up close at its face like really look at its face you will notice very quickly they are they look exactly like a banted except one evolved to have an elytra and wings and stuff or not an elytra but like a winged formation is different and the other one because there is even like bark mantids that look exactly like roaches and i know they tr- really yeah they're they're like they're not bipedal like the roach the mantids kind of behave you know what I really love are the orchid mantises. Those are like, I learned from those in Animal Crossing and then <laughs> saw them in real life and I was like, what? I mean. Yeah. I, I'm i one of the people that unfortunately I can either make somebody really, really want a new species or I can make them hate species depending on how, many information, how much information you want about a talk. So I always find myself never knowing which like which route to go where people are like, I want an orchid mantis. And I'm like, I'm just going to shut up and say nothing because I don't want to. So they're on your like, are they in your burn book? Tell us. No, they're, okay. I think that you should experience every bug ever. I mean, I, I mean that honestly. I think that every single person should have whatever they want and they, they will find that maybe the pros and cons. And that's like I do my YouTube videos and I'm just giving you care guides and pros and cons and you can kind of do whatever you want with it, right? So my issue with mantids, I've made abundantly clear. My issue with orchid mantids is I feel like they're overpriced. They're Ooh. overpriced and they are, if you're going to get any mantis, get a ghost mantis because the survivability increases by about 95%. Orchids are are pretty also weird fact about them they actually evolved before the orchid to look like that <laughs> that's amazing yeah I, there were no orchids and they evolved <laughs> yeah, yeah. tons of little orchids around our house so like i think that might be why i'm attracted to the little orchid mantises they don't get big so that's the the first thing that people i always tell them they always think like oh this is going to be a decent sized mantis i'm like no it's not it's going to get like no bigger than like your I don't know, the first two digits you finger, it's, they're really small. Oh, they have really, small. really high humidity needs and they have, they're Ugh. exorbitantly expensive because people that are breeders of mantids, they sell them at such a young age because they just want to get rid of them before they all die. Oh. I read the span is so short on them, five to nine months. Oh my God, that's like terrible. Nails. And you can't, if you buy multiples too, like this, I don't know if you want, if you guys do breeding or anything. I know you do for jumping spiders, but like for instance, yeah. if you're a breeder, you, you want to be able to buy a lot of something to be able to breed because I want to have the least amount of impact on the world as I can, right? Because I, I, I buy captive bread, but you know, people can tell you captive bread and like you have your vendors that you really trust, but like do, you know, does that make sense? Like, you can trust somebody implicitly, but until they show you definitive proof, you could be wrong. Oh, um, yeah. But when you when you buy any mantis, they have this really irritating thing where, like, if they're all from the same oof, the males will become males, like, confirmed males, and then die before the females become confirmed females and breed. Um, oh. So, like, it's, it's just exhausting. And, that, like, that's the thing about it. Now, pros, they are an active and actually active hunter. So they not only look like something that is, you know, like a, like a, a flower, for instance, but they are one of the few species that will actually actively go and search for food. Like if you drop something in there, they will go hunting it down where everything else will just kind of stand there and be like, I'm a stick. 
there <laughs> i don't give a shit you don't know what i am and you're gonna be so confused looking at me because you're like is this fucking flower running at me and then you're dead <laughs> you know what i mean like so they're that's the dopest part about them is their hunting ability like you never have to worry about the meeting they will eat every time oh that's so uh-huh. It's just, oh, yeah, what a shame about their lifespan. Is it like jumping spiders and that, like, the more they eat, they're just kind of just marching forward to death? I, I think, like, I have a hot take on that. I, jumping spiders and I, I think most people kill their jumping spiders because they feel like Absolutely. I think it's the same thing. They yeah. Yeah. I've seen a lot of big jumping spiders. Yeah, especially on Instagram. And it's like, dude, is that gravid? They're like, no, it's captive. And it's like, wow, okay. <laughs> I <laughs> don't feed it. I was, I was breeding them for a while. And then I was telling people, I'm like, just don't feed them a meal bigger than an abdomen. They'll be totally fine. And then people were like, but I don't want to do that. And I was like, well, then they're going to die. And I don't have a knife to tell you that. Like, if you ate something, the size of your goddamn torso you're not gonna be like good you know what i mean like you're gonna be like oh, uh, oh, i do that oh. once a week <laughs> i was just like you might enjoy it like a couple times but if every week <laughs> someone is like hey guess what i got you a nine foot sub you're like i guess yeah could you imagine <laughs> eating like a meal the size of your own body mm. yeah <laughs> in taco bell or domino's i could <laughs> yeah what's your order at taco bell lauren i freaking love the new stackers they're on the value menu what does that mean it's uh, the value menu is just like you know oh no that, i know what that is <laughs> <laughs> no what's a stacker oh, the it's new it's, um, it's like it's a volume a, sorry it's a folded up like quesadilla and it's got steak and cheese in it it is so freaking good they're only like three something a piece you could eat like three of them and be like set for the night and then this I'm episode watching. of spoodcast was brought to you by taco bell you, what's your order are you a taco bell person i I am. Okay. I want to make this before I tell you what my order is. You have to imagine this. I am six foot four. I'm 320 pounds. I am a monster. <laughs> grilled stuff burrito. Yeah. I do a, I do a steak grilled stuff burrito and two burrito supremes. So I can. Hell yeah. And then That's it has to have a mild sauce. Oh, I love the mild. Speaking bigger, but I'm pretty sure I get out, eat you, and Taco Bell. <laughs> so. This is what's really irritating about being my size. I don't have a big stomach. So, like, I eat, like, a thousand times a day, but I eat, like, little tiny meals. Like, I can just, like, I can inhale a medium Domino's pizza, like, half of it. And, like, <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Probably, like, five minutes. Do you think that would be, like, the same as, like, a wax worm then? Yes. Like, for a spood? Yeah. Oh. So, a spood eating a big wax worm would be a large or medium Domino's pepperoni. Probably. Can I ask you, where did the phrase spood come from? Uh, it like became popular very quickly. And I've no never idea. No, it, it like came, it took the internet by storm. And then I was just like, <laughs> do you mean spider? And people are like, no, spood. I'm like, are we saying the same words? I'm just curious. I didn't do it. I did put it on my license plate, though. <laughs> so. Oh, I'm not blaming you. I think it's amazing. I'm just curious because it came out of nowhere. And I was like, is this a meme that I don't get? Like, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I just like it because it has poo in it. I think people like it because it's, like, friendlier than saying spider. And some people get freaked out by, like, the word spider. Okay. I th- um, I, if that's what it is. Not I like us. That. Other people get freaked out by spider. Like, some people, like, right. when I say... Like, they're like, what do you do? And I'm like, spider stuff. And they're like, ooh, spiders. If I was food stuff, hey, no one copy me. Maybe <laughs> I'm <be> scared. <laughs> I, I like that because I, I grew up at a time where, like, nobody was into bugs. I was, like, the only bug nerd. Like, I know there's a lot of, like, hypocrisy around, like, people not liking jumping spiders and stuff like that because they're like, well, they're not manly enough. And I'm like, it's a shit. <laughs> Fuck you. What has, why does it have to be manly? You know what I mean? Like, that's the first thing. But second off, I think that jumping spiders were the best thing to happen in the community. Do you know tarantulas are next? Like, I don't know if you guys know this, but you're going to suddenly, if you have the same concept of if this is cute and I love this, you're going to continue to have that mindset for everything. If you, if you, do, if you do. <laughs> I think Lena and I are on the same page with this one. <laughs> Actually, I'm curious what you think, and we can cut this out, but... Because I'm on immune suppressant, like a really, really heavy one that used to be a chemo drug. 
Mm-hmm. So I was told by a couple different people, like, don't ever, because I don't know, like, I don't have any B cells. So they're like, just don't. But like talking to Victor, he was basically like, if you get bit by something, you caused it. Like, they're not going to come out and just bite you for funsies, is yeah. how he put it. I, I listened to the one with Victor, and this is now I want to make this abundantly clear. I'm not a doctor, so don't listen to me on that. <laughs> um, like, I don't want to tell you to do something and then you die. Uh, oh. But this is my honest take I have 1,800 tarantulas, or I, I keep changing the number because I genuinely have no idea. It's at least <laughs> 1,500 tarantulas. Wait, I'm like in shock. Like, you have 1,500 like at this moment. Yeah, but I also breed them, so you have to imagine. Like, I'm sitting on three egg sacs that are 500 special piece, right? So that's like... Oh, okay. Like, so it's... I would say if I were to remove bread spiders, like babies, like slings, I mm-hmm. have probably 800, 900 tarantulas that are like one-fourth inch or above. So that's why I never know exactly how many. So this is this is what I'll say. I think that between Victor and myself, there's a lot of experience in various tarantulas between me and him we have vastly differing opinions on like what is a sane spider to own and hold and what is not a sane spider to have (laughs) because he leans he leans more towards the dark side of like i'm gonna hold a p metallica and i'm of the mindset of like i don't i don't ride the elevator ten thousand times hoping it eventually breaks you know what i mean like if if i have that many spiders it's it's not an if it's a when i'm going to get bit so oh wow that's not the feeling i got from him oh no no he's the kind of person that's just like i don't give a shit how many trash as I have, I'm going to hold them all. And I'm like, you're nuts. <laughs> so like, I think that you could feasibly have a new world tarantula, something that's low venom and your chances with, I mean, it's going to have urticating hairs. And I listened to his, I was, I was cracking up so much because I love Victor so much, but he has <laughs> a, an irregular uh, effect when urticating hairs hit him. Like he swells up like his, he's not like a normal urticating <laughs> hair. You know what I mean? Like, like like that dude, like gets hit by an urticating hair, and it's like he got hit with the most allergic thing on the planet. I like I oh. my arms are covered in them right now. I was breeding spider yesterday, oh. and it itches and it sucks. Like it feels like you have really irritating poison ivy, and it, it gets, gets worse, worse over right? Time. Yes. Oh my god, jinx. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it 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 does. But even that, I'm even curious because it does seem to have diminishing returns. It's not like it's not like every time you get haired, it's cumulatively worse until suddenly you explode. <laughs> it's just like it hits this point to where you're just like, I'm fucking itchy as hell and I hate everything. You like you could get a dwarf trench, like a little pumpkin patch or something. And even if it bit you, it's a fucking spider that's like two inches, you know, three inches, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, so your chance and like you to his point, like you really have to fuck up. Like they're fast. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. Their tarantulas are much faster than jumping spiders. But you know what jumping spiders do? The tarantulas don't do. They jump. Like yeah. a lot. It's kind of their name. If you get like a terrestrial tarantula, they're not jumping anywhere. They're like, they evolved to overpower their prey. Like they're like lumbering monsters. You know what I mean? Like they are, if like you watch the movie Halloween, they are the Michael Myers. They are not like, <laughs> like they're just walking after you forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're 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 clumsy oh i did i did a bunch of like slow motion like videos and, and i'll try to send you guys so i did a bunch of slow motion videos <laughs> of like tarantulas like trying to catch prey and they miss it every fucking time because they're blind so <laughs> like they're not they're fast and big and they're not really good at anything so most bites are like people trying to hand feed them like a moron and then they get bit because they're like holding Ooh. it and then like bites them in the thumb and it's just like that's your fault you know what i mean yeah i sat on a yellow jacket a couple days ago and i got stuck on my butt so and i survived so is that worse like have you like what is that poison compared to like tarantula do you know that'd be it's, interesting it's different I, I mean you you gotta there's a couple things that people don't realize about getting bit by a tarantula that makes it worse than a wasp is like one a wasp <laughs> Well, size of stinger. <laughs> That's the biggest one. The size of a wasp stinger versus a tarantula fang is a, it's like the difference between like eating like, a, you know, like a lady finger and a 12 inch sub. Like it's a fucking <laughs> huge difference in size. The other thing is that like wasps, their stingers are internal. So they kind of like hold them inside and they're kind of clean, right? Like they're not really like, they're not like shoving their stinger into soil all the time. Tarantulas are <laughs> still just like white <laughs> shit all the time. They're like <laughs> eating whatever the fuck that lives in soil. So like your chances mm. of an infection are really high with like a bite. If they catch you like in a like a tendon, they could technically snap a tendon. Like if they're but Holy I'm, shit. I'm giving you 
I need to give you the, the here's the disclaimer though. These are like the worst case scenarios. Like no yeah, one yeah, has yeah. ever had this happen. But like I've seen the teeth <laughs> in a teeth me. Like this motherfucker could definitely chew through your hand. You just gotta look at all of the pros and cons. You it's like anything else. Like you'll find a tarantula that's gonna work for you. Get a new world. Your chances of being bitten are so so low. Like it, and like if you really are worried about it, don't hold them. Like you don't have to. Like everybody Ugh. wants to, but they don't have to. You know, like. See, that's that's why I like jumpers, though, because I want to hold them. I want a friend. But have you been bit by a jumper, Juice? I yeah, actually, I think it's the only thing that's ever bit me. What? Okay, so I read that it's like a wasp sting, and since I just got stung, like, I thought I was sitting on a needle, because I've been poking holes into deli cups, so I was like, oh, I left the needle on this, and I just thought I sat on it. So it wasn't that bad. Do you think it was like a yellow jacket sting? Did it? It did it by surprise, and I didn't even notice it until afterwards, but, like, what? I was... In the moment, I was kind of panicking about something else, so I didn't really notice it too much. But I knew I noticed it after the fact because I had holes on two sides. You know how like their teeth work, like how they're their teeth yeah. are like if I'm giving you a hug, like you know, like I don't mm-hmm. know how to describe that. But they, they when they bite you, they're not because that's the biggest problem about being bit by a spider. It's not one sting, it's two. You know what two. I mean? So you yeah. get caught on both sides. That was the part that caught me off guard. But no, it bit into like my thumb, but it didn't really like hurt. Did it just venom in you at all or See, I don't know because it didn't itch. It didn't do anything. It was. I was trying to save a male, and the the, the female got me. Oh, from Peru. Yeah, and he was being a dick, anyways. And I was actually more worried about him biting me, and then she fucking bit me. I was like, "You bastard!" I was actually <laughs> defending you. Um, they they dry bite a lot. That's the thing about spiders is like their system that does all the injecting and stuff is kind of like our insulin, right? Like our appendix or whatever the hell makes yeah digestive yeah it makes the same digestive juices so rather than us have like you know us is it a spleen what the hell is the organ that makes fucking insulin for us is that spleen <laughs> i know more about bugs than people i'm so sorry <laughs> um, they no. it's, i don't know it's one of those organs that like you kind of need it but you kind of don't if you don't gallbladder have insulin. Yeah. is that it i don't know i just said it i'm gonna go with pancreas appendix. i'm gonna say oh pancreas that appendix. sounds no appendix is it? Oh. I don't know. That's like what you add to your cover letter <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> to get into college. You're like, oh, by the way. You just blew my mind because now I'm sitting here going like, why is this the same fucking word? Like they were like, <laughs> we'll put this in the appendix and change it later. And then they just like left it. They're like, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, by the way, it's pancreas. Oh, is it? OK, yeah. I'm glad. What was my oh, my point was. That because it helps create the digestive juices is the same as our pancreas, right? So like I, I don't remember the point I was going with that, but it had something to do with a pancreas. I'm glad we. Got, so then, I'm glad yeah. collectively with the three of us, we have like <laughs> one person's knowledge of our organs. <laughs> Google, did you hear it just now? I'm sorry, it pooped everywhere. How do you have a Tamagotchi? <laughs> how? Yes, I paid for it. <laughs> thank you. I, thank you for explaining how <laughs> capitalism works. <laughs> Yeah, there's there's new ones. I just, you know, with all of the stuff, I just wanted one more thing that I need to feed. So wait, wait, wait. Okay, so I think it sounds like you personally lean more towards new world. Is that for noobs or for yourself as well? I I lean more towards the species, less the old world, new world kind of. Okay. Like I have I have I have really like I would say my top favorite spider i think my number one favorite spider if i had to guess was ephibopus marinus which is a skeleton like tarantula which is a fossorial new world a little bit spicier but not more their venom's probably not any different mm-hmm. but second favorite spider is the arpactura pulchropes which is a old world fossorial and then the list goes on i, I mean like i've got a shit ton of favorites but no i don't really i'm an equal opportunity person when it comes to tarantulas for me it's more about like how cool is it the personality how, like oh oh P- obts are my favorite tarantula of like all time like mm-hmm. but i'm not gonna recommend an obt to somebody that's never had a tarantula you know what i mean like yeah they're, they're... lauren that's an orange bitey thing oh yeah yeah so okay i could go on for fucking hours about obts and people calling <laughs> them that and i won't do that to you but <laughs> Most most people, I have 195 OBTs alone. What? I have five 
mature females. I have two mature males, and then I have a shit ton of slings. Of all of those, I've got two females that will threat pose me. Those two th- females that threat pose me were surrenders because I take surrenders from people that are they need to you know they bought a tarantula or they bought a hundred tarantula in a certain in their life and then they forgot that they're twenty year living creatures. They'll put them in boxes and stuff and they'll be like, I don't want this anymore. So I have these two OBT females that Aww. will threat pose me every time, but. It's because they're in a fucking plastic shoe box. And so like <laughs> you imagine you're a tarantula that lives in an area or evolved in an area where birds try to eat you all the time, a top opening cage. And so every time I'm opening that enclosure, I am a predator approaching them. Right. So I think, I think they're extremely, extremely, extremely stick like skittish and scared. They won't run from you 95% of the time. But if you have them in a shitty enclosure, they're going to fuck up. Like they're going to be mad and they're going to be like, dude, why are you? <laughs> Wait. Of you. and then they'll they'll get dramatic and so i've seen people intentionally fuck with them to get like instagram reels and stuff so it's just like mm. i don't i don't think they're really that bad i do not have the problems that other people have i now did i almost get bit in the face by one yes it was a hundred percent my fault okay imagine this oh you, either of you have kids one of you has kids right huh? lauren I, okay lauren you had a kid imagine this had your, oh your okay sorry have that's what, no <laughs> You had the kid. You have the child still, but you had it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Imagine, if you will, you are very pregnant. Let's say nine months pregnant. Oh. And somebody comes in and takes all of the furniture out of your house. And you try to flee into your bathroom. And then they start hitting you with a giant brush. Oh, I'm so excited. Can't. You're probably going to bite him in the fucking face, too, right? Because like, you're <laughs> like, dude, I'm so pregnant. Leave me alone. That's what I did. I was uh, trying to move her to another enclosure and she decided to, it was really adorable. I had moved all the stuff out and there was this like hole in the back corner and she decided to like shove her fat ass into the corner, but she was so fat that her butt stuck out. Like she couldn't, she was so gravid. She could not fit her whole body. So it was just (laughs) like this little fat blueberry hanging out of the top. She was very, very gentle. So like then I'm taking a paintbrush trying to get her out. So I'm like, sweetie, you've got to move to the new enclosure. And she, in, in like, this was so, cause they're so fast. They literally teleport. She ran up the paintbrush. I dropped the paintbrush and she immediately at the end of the paintbrush, keep in mind, this is falling at the same, all this is happening. She ran up the paintbrush and then like, did the threat pose like trying to hit me with her face but i dropped the paintbrush <laughs> so i dropped it towards my face like an idiot so her no. face was coming and then i backed up at the same time so she missed me by about two inches oh. uh, and the people are like oh my god and i'm like dude it was literally my fault i poked a pregnant female too much and she was like i'm done with this shit i'm gonna i'm gonna fucking bite him and i was like i get it I get <laughs> I'm so sorry did you pee a little <laughs> I, i'm not gonna lie i that was the only time <laughs> I've ever had it to where I was genuinely scared for my life. Oh, fuck. Because you, yeah, it takes about, I think it's like two, two milliseconds for your brain to process neurons. And by the time my brain processed the neuron, she was halfway up the brush. Oh, God. So, like, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Juice, I've been meaning to ask you, what's your big surprise? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. So the reason I had to do this at five o'clock today. So I, I'm trying to figure out, I'm trying to say this in a way that will like get the suspense up at the same time. <gasps> kind of be dope. You're gravid. Because what I, Sorry. what I don't want to, do, yeah, it's me. I'm, I'm gravid as hell, guys. I'm ready to <laughs> pop spiders any day now. We, we just actually bought a, well, we didn't buy, we leased a warehouse. So why that's a big deal is because I'm about to create a state-of-the-art breeding facility. Wow. Um, and so we now have expansion for our dry goods. We have expansion now for... Our living goods, which will mean that my people that buy from me directly, they can buy care guides that and we're also talking like like very high level. Like if you buy a spider from me, you can see basically every time it ate for the last six months, you'll be able to see the humidity, the temperatures, all of that for care guides. Like it's going to be a pretty big deal. Wow. Oh. This will obviously take time, right? Like it's not something that happens, but it's beneficial to, you know, businesses that buy wholesale stuff. It'll be businesses, you know, beneficial for retail people as well. But yeah, because I wanted to, I'm a pretty big conservation person and giving back to the community. And if you're not a part of it, join California Bug Club. They are exactly as it sounds. So do you have to live in California to be in the Bug Club? 
you you know you technically don't i mean there's nothing saying so what what we plan on eventually doing in it i took it over from edgar ortega from the california herpetological society and so what it's eventually going to be is just a place for people that like if you're in california and events happening come and join us like it's going to be a place for bug people to get together because my goal is to make it equal opportunity for all bug people because i noticed i'm sure you guys have seen it too there's a lot of like gatekeeping in like I'm a tarantula person, therefore I'm the best. And then it's just like, but then you've got like a person over here with like phasmids or roaches or something. And we kind of like treat them like second class citizen. I'm trying to like remove a lot of that because at the end of the day, it's like, dude, we're all nerds. Like, let's just, yeah. yeah. It's like people that do like, fa- like fantasy football. It's like, dude, that's just D and D for jocks. Stop. It is. Or it's like spiders to cure arachnophobia or like cute spiders, but it- it has the subtext no jumping spider edition what yeah you haven't seen that no that's so weird i think i think that the bugs should be all inclusive cuz back in the day you didn't have you only had reptile expos and they were really small you have this paradigm shift where it's like everything became more inclusive just out of happenstance and then mm-hmm. before that i think it should continue that route and so i know a lot of people that you know, they'll be like anti jumper. And then you realize it's like, yeah, but the undertone is they're anti women or they're anti, you know, LGBTQI. Or so. Or anti like, cute. God. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, dude, who gives a shit? It's a, it's a spider. It's like the most metal creature on earth. Like it's, it, dude, it's not sure it's cute, but it's still digestive juice breaks down prey. Like it's pretty <laughs> dope. I don't know about you. Jumping spiders don't even seem like spiders to me. They're like, just not i don't know what they are the spiders were they're spiders but they had a better marketing team and i thought that was pretty brilliant because that's true <laughs> okay i have heard that or i'm having deja vu one or the other but jumping spiders speak for themselves they are so freaking cute like no one can doubt that those little eyes like even the most grossed out person of spiders like my mom can look at a close-up picture of of one of my jumpers and be like, okay, that's actually cute. They're amazing for curing arachnophobia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I always said it's because of the mustache. I don't know if you guys yeah. the little pedipalps they have, how it covers their fangs. Cause that's the thing. Oh. Jumping spiders are cute until you see them too close and they move their pedipalps and you see the giant fangs they have hiding underneath them. I think the little pedipalp mustache they have makes them look like a Walter Brimley character. And it's <laughs> the thing on the planet to me. <laughs> baby walruses ah yeah i don't know yeah. the octopunctaneous if i'm saying that correctly they have like the full hair on their teeth which is like makes them i i think in my opinion like little mini teddy bear spiders it is interesting though that they get a pass for how cute they are velvet spiders get a pass for how cute they are but I look at tarantulas and I also see them that cute. And I don't know what it says about me, but I'll be over there like giving them little baby noises. I'm like, oh, you're so cute. And, like I'm over there like talking to them they're, like kids. And like they're, I know when they look terrifying, like nobody likes to get threat posed. You know what I mean? And I'm wondering if that's why, or is it because, oh, I actually have a theory. I think it's the neck. Ooh, the neck. For me, it's their arms. I guess they don't have a neck, but you know what I'm saying. They kind of look the illusion of a neck. The, the arms make sense, too. They're little, <laughs> like, I think if you can look like right in their little eyes, it makes it better. But if their eyes were just like bigger, I think that people wouldn't be as afraid for tarantulas. Yeah, they do have beady little eyes. That is, <laughs> which, which is interesting because that means that okay so this is what you said is that we are more comfortable with front facing predator eyes than we are with top eyes you know how like jumping spiders like their eyes are like very front facing so that means that we've basically evolved to trust predators <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> like i didn't think of it like that that's true that's true huh. i think because they have like black on the top of their head that kind of like sometimes masks the the smaller eyes and then the ones on the back like can kind of pretend like they don't have those at all sometimes. Yeah, it's, it's funny that you mentioned that because this client that I met up with today, 
she was like, I like that my spider, she has a very dark face regal. And she's like, I love how it's dark because I can't see the eyes that it has like oh. that many eyes as much. And I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, that's the part that I like. But <laughs> yeah, she likes that because they're darker that that the so many eyes, it's I don't think it's about how the size of them, but how many there are. Huh. Wait until she notices how many legs they have. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, shit. It's kind of unfair that we think that jumping spiders are cute, but tarantulas aren't. When really the reason the eyes are so big on a jumper is their vision hunting versus a tarantula yeah. white as shit. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. like they don't really need big eyes. Like that's unfair as hell. I think it is the eyes, though. It really is. It's like they're just just put just put little what are those called? The little uh, <laughs> googly eyes. Googly eyes? <laughs> just put because it's not like they're using the their eyes are basically useless. Can you so just, do a picture for us with like I will like die <laughs> laughing? A yeah. tarantula with googly eyes. <laughs> It would it would either make it better or worse. You know what I mean? Like if they had giant I eyes. I know it already. You need a real one too, like with googly if you if you can actually just put gently set googly eyes on a chart. <laughs> oh, I'm not about to do that. They will maul the shit out of me the second I try. <laughs> Well, their their hairs are really good. They they sense vibration, which also means like air pressure and, and changes like that. I don't I don't think I could sneak up on a tarantula to save my life. Really? Literally. So yeah, that's they, how good they, their hairs are. Yeah, their their hairs can pick up everything. The other reason that like people love to hold stuff and then they're like shocked when tarantulas don't want to be held, and I'm like, dude, imagine if your entire body was covered in ears. How much would you want to hear? Like your heart is just pumping blood through your body at all times, oh. right? And so it's like they can feel the blood coursing through your veins as it's happening. Mm. And it sounds like in a mountain just erupting volcano. You know what I mean? Like that's and important. you're talking. So like you're they're very, very sensitive. That's why like they don't like the if I sit down, they'll all come out because they're like, Oh, he's feeding me. But if I am like <laughs> if I sit still and I'm quiet for long enough, they'll all just like come back out of their burrows and then I'll I sneezed one day and I watched like a fucking thousand spiders just vanish. And I, that was when I became aware of like, oh shit, there's a lot of you guys looking at me right now. Like, holy crap. That would be yeah, like quite a sight. Like sneaking <laughs> and seeing a bunch of spiders just taken off. Yeah, you watch your whole wall move and you're like, uh oh, what the hell? No, but you, they're very, very sensitive to, to what that sound. They're covered in, in hairs they're basically hearing you know they don't i let me rephrase they're not they can't hear shit <laughs> they don't have <laughs> but they can oh. they act as sensory organs that allow them to hear feel sense vibrations aerial mm. pressure barometric pressure all of that that's um, so wild yeah it's it's crazy but you also have to remember too like they haven't evolved in 140 million years like they're a very very simple species Aranea, so like the true spiders they're a much more recent evolution, I should say, than Theraphosidae. So, like, that's why petite people tend to say, like, oh, these spiders are smarter. And it's like, well, it's not really necessarily true. They just evolved for a different purpose. They didn't need to... Mm. They, they built a different niche, where, like, Theraphosidae was like, my niche is I have a hole, and then when things wander by me, I'm going to eat it. And that was... <laughs> or it was like... Or I've evolved to be in a tree, and when something's nearby me, I jump on it and eat it. There was really never a need to fill the niche that, like, jumping spiders is, which is like I'm going to go run and hunt all day. Because think of it from like, think of it from like an animal perspective, where they don't have monocultural farms and grocery stores, right? Like you're using a shit ton of metabolism to go run something down and eat. With tarantulas, they're using as little metabolism as they possibly can at all times. They're kind of like a like a screensaver. Like they're motion activated. <laughs> screensaver. Yeah. Yeah. Like they once movement happens or vibration happens, then their brain because it's just a brain stem with all spiders. They don't really have a brain. They, it like activates and they're like, yes, sensory organs have picked something up. Now let's go. And that's just kind of how they whereas like your jumping spiders in the wild they could be you know they're not walking far they might walk maybe two three hundred four hundred feet from where they were but that's a really long distance from like where for a little tiny jumper that's like the size of a quarter you know it'd be like you and i running like 10 miles trying to find food and they were also jumping on things that are flying which is do you yeah. think that jumping spiders have the capacity to love 
No. Okay, let no. me let me answer this a different way. I think that their capacity to love is an unimportant part of the equation. Um, Ooh, true. They don't have a limbic system, but you have a, a bearded dragon. Your bearded dragon doesn't have a limbic system either, uh-huh. but you you are its favorite rock. It knows you want food. It will snuggle up to <laughs> you when they do that that cute little waggle they do when they pancake on you. She You're doesn't rock. She pancakes, but she doesn't ever come up to me and want to cuddle. <laughs> and that's that's the thing. Like I, I think as human beings having a limbic system, love is one of those things that we in, we implicitly want everything to have. But like love is different for them because by the very definition, they don't create the chemicals and bonding and all those things that we have, right? So like uh-huh. I don't I don't think them being able to love us is necessary. I think us loving them and protecting them from the wild. Because think about it, like if you're your jumping spider in the wild, it has to worry about birds every day. It has to worry about centipedes. It has to worry about other things eating it. Like you've given it protection. You've given it your entire heart. And for its entire mm-hmm. life, you will love this thing implicitly. And it's safe with you. And I think that's really all that matters, right? Like, yeah. It, yeah, I love it, that. It can't love you. It have to. You love <laughs> it. Like that's. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. I feel like we ask a few people that sometimes and it's fun to hear everyone's different take. I think too, like we, we get too fixated on on love from creatures and we forget that like love can only actually be reciprocated by like mammals and birds. Birds. That's, That's really hard. But then I feel like in my weird take, like love can be like something totally different to them. But they maybe still can have, like, maybe love for a bearded dragon is, like, recognizing their owner. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? (laughs) <laughs> no, no, it 100% does. Because that's the thing is we use the human definition of love, but then we try to force it on other things. And it's like, yeah, does it matter? Like if their if their version of feeling of love is their version of it, then like, who gives a shit? You yeah, know? Like, yeah. This is like, they're like, hey, I like to climb on this person. Well, why do you like to climb on him? Well, food happens when I climb on him. And it's just like, well, that's <laughs> just, like, yeah, and I love food. So therefore, I, you know, by what is that? <laughs> Yeah, so it's just like I. I think we get too focused on like, can this thing love me the way I love it? No, yeah, that's that's just yeah factual there. But then like from that point, it's like it doesn't matter because you're giving it your entire heart and soul for the rest of its life, which is a very short amount of time. But to it, it's its entire lifespan, its entire world. So yeah, I think that they love in their own way, but they don't love in a human way, and I think that's all that really matters. Yeah, that is so heartfelt. I love that. Yeah, Lauren had a a guy who really just wanted her to know that that you were stupid, basically, because they can't love you back. And he actually even said that like he doesn't love anything that can't love him back at all. And it was like, wow, that sounds like personality disorder, dude. <laughs> like, I'm wow. Really, like- <laughs> if you look at life in such a cold black and white way, like don't get me wrong like i look at things from a scientific perspective all the time but like i i, I think that like people we're talking about like that guy for instance just like they look at things in like a very like cold and and unfeeling way and it's like they they feel you know i've met a lot of these people especially with like degrees where they're like i learned at uc davis this thing and it's like well that's dope <laughs> who gives a shit like I, okay you field collected spiders that's fucking dope but like how many of you cared for and actually raised you know what i mean like it's the yeah. it's that cold calculation of like you can be scientific and you can still feel a certain way. Like, am I wrong by saying that I feel this thing or like Lauren says, I feel this thing loves me in its own way. Well, guess what? We can't prove it and we can't disprove it. So therefore it doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. you wanna, it, like if you want to believe that, like we have core beliefs as human beings, we're allowed to feel that way. Like we, if you're, if you're not finding yourself attached to things just because it can't love you back, you will find yourself in a very dark world where it's like, <laughs> cool. I got humans and dogs and cats sometimes. That's cool. What about plants? I feel like I love all my plants. Like when you underwater a plant and it's just like, oh, I'm sad. And I'm like, I'm sorry. Like, I wish I could tell. Anyway, sorry. (laughs) I I think that human beings need to empathize more with the smaller things because otherwise we end up in the situation we're in now, right? Like we're just like, I, I know a lot of people that really appreciate the world now that it's nearly on fire. It's like, you know, if we had that you know, 50 <laughs> years ago, we might not be in the situation we're in now. <laughs> not to make that get so dark. No, oh, we've been nuclear warring. So it's, 
It's like if people just cared for the little things, like the bees and not using pesticides and, you know. Well, we're afraid of bees, too, unfortunately, so. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Everybody loves honeybees, but what they don't realize is the only reason anybody gave a shit about honeybees is somebody decided to put a campaign together because monocultural farms make a billion dollars a year. And so the bees campaign, but no one ever talked about these solitary bees or the you know, actual American bees, they all talk about the European honeybee, which is like, you know, it, it's just, it, it's always funny to me. Like nobody cares about a problem until the problem's inherently there. And then they'll use these marketing campaigns of like, save the bees. And it's like, yeah, we can save them, but can we save all of the bees, please? Not just this one fucking species that makes you money. Because <laughs> there's so Aww. many types of bees. Like we have yeah. the non honey producing bee. I forget what it's called. They're not cute like the big old honey bumblebee kind of things. People disregard them when really, like, you just got to set up little homes for them and they'll be chill. Yeah. (laughs) And they'll pollinate all your plants. There's this paper recently where somebody was writing, and I can't remember who posted online, but this guy, like, you could see he was, like, so desperately in his paper trying to convince people to save the species he was like trying, and they do this a lot. Scientists have to like, when they're making these papers for like grant money to like try to save something for conservation, mm-hmm. they ha- they have to like, they have to word it in this really bizarre way where they're like, this is how it's helpful to you. And they'll start like listing off all this ways. Like, you, like uh, I saw something about fig wasps. Like if you like fig newtons, you need to care about fig wasps. And it's like, well, everything you're saying is a, is technically wrong. But you did it to get people to care about this wasp. And I appreciate that. You know, does that Mm. make sense? Whereas people, they almost have to like fucking give a shit before they're like, I want, it's not like I want to save this species. It's like, I want to save the species only if it benefits me. And then everybody writing something to say, save the species is trying to like find a way for you to empathize with it so that you can actually give a shit about the saving of this thing. Like Mm. ash wars. Like we were like, I remember this is like 2008. The president at the time was like, we need to like help with this ash borer problem. And then like, everyone's like, you want to spend $2 billion on bugs? And it was like, yeah, dipshit. Do you like wood and like crops and stuff? Like we need to like take care of. (laughs) So like, we always have to, as humans, like find a way to be like, how can, how does this impact your coffee or how does this impact your Lululemons or how does this impact your Ford truck? Like we have to find (laughs) something that like correlates to it. You know what I mean? Like that's already been proven. If we like tell people like, this is going to affect the earth, like killing all the honeybees and continuing to do all that. And you know, all the emissions and shit, people don't care. So we have to like put it on a small yeah. scale. Yeah. Uh, and I'm so sorry, Lauren, is it, are you the one that's a social worker or a case worker? It's me. Oh, so you. I'm so sorry. So you, you are used to working with people. So like, you know, people, I just feel like sometimes the concepts are too big for us like that. You know, mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, like macro stuff. Yeah. Like, like to, to Lauren's point, like we can't, we cannot get somebody to care on such a large scale, like, because it's too difficult for me, it, you know, like a, what is a person in the middle of the Midwest who is only making $12 an hour? Why do they give a shit about like the <laughs> world if their world is so crazy already? Like, it's like during COVID, like when a couple people died, we were like, Oh no. But then when it got really bad at the beginning, like people stopped caring because we couldn't. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're right. I knew I knew lots of people during COVID. I nearly died from COVID the first round. A lot of people that well, no, it's fine. I'm still alive now. I knew a <laughs> lot of people that they were very anti-COVID and didn't think it was real and all these things. And then they got COVID and were like, "Oh my god, it's real!" And in that <laughs> kind of concept, it's always cracked me up because it's just like you 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 can't care about a thing unless it directly affects you. Like you know, mm-hmm. like I know. They'll, I've heard this phrase a lot. Like, I can appreciate this because I have daughters. I don't like sexual assault because I have a daughter. And it's like, oh, that's weird. Yeah. <laughs> don't say that out and, loud, you dork. <laughs> yeah. And, and I was always like, okay, so I appreciate that you've at least got kind of, I, I don't know. I'm always torn because I'm like, in one part, I'm glad you got there. 
But in the other part, it's like, but why did it have to be that? Like, why do you have to know a woman to care about women kind of thing? It's It's just like, what if you didn't know any women? Would you just be like, fuck them? I don't care. Like, who gives a shit? Like, I, it's the same concept, I think, for a lot of people, where it's just like, you, you have to inherently be affected or you will never be affected or have an opinion about the object. And this is going to sound super weird, but like, I feel like if you can empathize for something like a small creature, like a spider or, tarantula or whatever you have a better understanding and more empathy for like other people in the world and emotional intelligence that's that's why i said early in the episode like i i feel like if you guys love jumping spiders the next thing that's inevitable is you will start to branch out to different things because you'll if you have the mindset and the and the mental intelligence to say i was wrong about this subject then you could be wrong about others i'm wrong here what else am I wrong about? You expanded so much more that now you're creepy, bug. Well, <laughs> but you know what I mean. I'm wondering, is there a cute way to keep roaches? <laughs> you can put them in little like Hello Kitty bento boxes. Can with, I like... make them a cute house? How does that? Yeah, work? yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna go back to when I said that roaches are the same as termites. So roaches in their heads or bodies, I don't know somewhere. I now this is where my my gap is. I don't know if it's a protozoan thing that. They have in it or if it's a bacterial or i'm sorry a symbiotic eukaryotes or whatever they have something inside of them that basically allows them to digest wood and then it creates calcium now it's just a thing that they have because they are a termites in them at some point along their lineage have the ability to do this so what you can do and this is how i do all my doobie roaches now keep in mind i sell my doobie roaches for bug people i don't give a shit if you got like if you got like reptiles and you're like they need a specific diet it's like i don't give a fuck bro put them in your own container like put them in quarantine for like 48 hours and they'll shit all of this out that's on you like you as the consumer it's up to you to do your home you, does that make sense like i'm not buying dog food for my dog having no idea what's in it like if you're buying something from me i'm assuming you're buying it for bugs it's juices arthropods if it turns out that it's for a reptile like it's kind of on you to like let me quarantine these for 48 hours before i feed them up so anyways you put them in a bin so like i have mine in a bin and then i use cork bark and then i put like a nice bioactive enclosure so i have like a nice level of like soil and then i've got like some isopods in there kind of cleaning up the poop and then i've got some springtails and i got some live moss in there like yeah you can go crazy because remember they don't they can't climb glass or plastic so like you can even have like a giant open bin that you can see all the time you can go crazy with it put some like i don't know like see like like a barbie playland thing like they're not gonna <laughs> use it yeah. but like go crazy like who gives a shit like you can and they can't climb it. oh my god i think i have the perfect setup my husband's gonna kill me but he'll get used Uh-oh. to it <laughs> you think i'm gonna make like a roach vivarium <laughs> or something i don't know not vivarium terrarium no water would that work yes absolutely just make sure that the plant is something no is okay so this is the i don't know what you're putting it in but you need to make sure that whatever you put in is not etched plastic and if it's glass it doesn't matter it just cannot be a surface that they can climb so just like put a couple roaches in it and then see if they can climb the container before you go crazy and go put everything in there you can add whatever you want into it like live plants like create it because blaptica dubia is like in central south america so like they are used to like a high humidity jungle type of scenario so you can get get crazy with it just remember if you're trying to feed it though it's gonna be pretty hard to chase them down if they're buried under the soil or under the plant so that was my next question do they bury under the soil the babies well they don't typically there will be more opt to be inside like your cork bark or whatever they really Mm. like to like stick to surfaces like cork bark people use um like egg flats i prefer to use cork bark because like let's say for instance i want to scoop like i want to take a plastic 32 ounce deli cup and i want to get like a hundred roaches at one time i have a big ass paintbrush i can take the cork bark i can put the cup at the bottom and i can just literally like swipe a paintbrush down and all of the roaches will fall in the cup Oh, I got the chills when you said that. (laughs) Yeah. So versus like if I have it on like an egg flats, I got to like take the egg flat and then I got to like tap it. You know what I mean? Like, I hate that. That drives me nuts. Um, I'm going to make a cue. I'm excited. You've inspired me. 
And I'll post it on Spoodcast when it's done. You should, because it's, they are, so one thing you got to remember, like you're in Reno, so like they cannot escape into your house and create, they will not ever be invasive in your house in any capacity. Oh, they really? actually, because they're Central South America, they really, they need like, unless you have a river literally like flowing through your house, they need constant humidity and constant liquids and foods and stuff. So that's um, where they've been kind of dying off and getting dried out. Yeah, they need high, high humidity. And then the I'm other learning thing so about, much. Thank you. This is like really good. To- <laughs> yeah, no, you're welcome. And then the other thing is, this is going to really change your mind about them. They're what's considered a eusocial creature. So they can actually communicate with each other. And sometimes when you open their bin, you're hearing a bunch of sounds. Uh-huh. That's the sounds of their feet. But sometimes it's them making noises to each other, telling them that they're scared. I've never noticed the noises, but now I'm going to listen. Like that honestly makes them a little like more. <laughs> Yeah. My eyes got a little tear. (laughs) Well, I told you learning about fruit flies and that they have preferences in their meats. So I was like, oh, I'm still going to kill you. But yeah, little brains. Yeah, fruit flies are so funny because they've they've got like these crazy they have brains and then they also what was it? The statistics? Like they were the they're like the The dumbest creatures. Well they're dumb, but they're also super hardy, but they also pound for pound are like the most well endowed creature besides banana slugs, like on the planet. Like they're wieners? <laughs> yes. They're wiener, as you called it, is huge compared to the, it's almost the I think it's the entire length of the Why when you squish them as a bloody from their wiener? <laughs> 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 it's a lot of blood a lot of blood so it's hemolymph they're all arthropod well all in invertebrates their blood is called hemolymph it's not it's not the same as ours but yeah that's why it's bloody they they have blood that's crazy yeah they're like little red water balloons mm-hmm. but it's real they, blood yes but no so hemolymph's purpose is more of like a what is that like it's like a hydraulic fluid for their joints whereas like us we have you know we have veins and capillaries and and aortic system theirs is like the oxygen that's like that's why like uh with bees if you hit them with like smoke they will just pass out it's because what you've done is oxygen is supposed to be inside their spiracles and instead you've replaced it with co2 and so until that that gas actually anaerobically leaves their system it cannot they can't breathe so their organs just shut down because they're just like well shit (laughs) so after you wait a couple seconds oxygen fills back up and then their hemolymph goes okay it's time to transfer all the stuff that's why it's like almost impossible to drown an insect most of the time if you just like pull them out of the water and you just set them down they'll dry out after like a couple hours and they'll be fine again huh except jumping spiders yeah yeah, like they will die right yeah book lungs are a little bit different because they're more active but they still, it's pretty hard to drown a jumping spider. Like you can, but it's, it's, it's not like as, like it's easy, actually easier to kill a human drowning than it is to kill a jumping spider or drowning. Really? Mm-hmm. That's good to know because like I had these little dishes and some people actually put water in them instead of the food. And I'm like, no, don't put the <laughs> water in them. You're going to drown your spider. <laughs> well, and they, they can, don't get me wrong. It's, it's just like you're, so like you remember how like there was all those cute pictures of like a jumping spider with like a a water drop on top of their head and it was like stop doing that that. yeah it's because the the spider doesn't have the strength to break the water tension so like when when they drown what's happening is like they are not strong enough to break the water tension with the amount of water that's in it and that's what ultimately drowns them and it's also been like hours right but if like if a jumping spider jumps into water now, it's not going to drown in the next 10 minutes. It's like you can air them out, just blow on them for a little bit and they'll be fine. <laughs> but like, that's good to know. But that's why it's just like, I just always put rocks and stuff in mine. So it's just like, they're not, they can climb out or like. Yeah. They're pretty hardy. I almost wonder if like your spider mist molts or it's having trouble getting a mole off, if then it would be okay to kind of just like spray their little like body with water to get it off you can so you because i've i've had to take care of a couple uh, both tarantulas and jumping spiders and mantids and 
So I've done a lot of, <laughs> I'm like, you know what? Rather than just name everything I've done, this a lot of different invertebrates. I, you can miss them or you can take a Q-tip and you can kind of get it wet and then you can kind of apply it to the area if you catch it. The, the issue is most miss molts are because of internal hydration, not external hydration, because I'm, I'm trying to think of how to put this. Imagine if rather your skin cells sloughing off, you're, you drank no water, you know, like water's good for our skin. Imagine yeah. you drank no water for a really, really, really long time. And then you molt out of your currently good skin underneath it is just your shitty <laughs> last six months of doing molly in the desert <laughs> that's obviously not gonna be good coachella skin yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got your your fire festival skin or whatever so like that's that internal hydration is is really important whereas like the external hydration matters obviously because it helps them breathe but it's not as important as that internal hydration that's good to know that's why Phytopus regius is such a hardy species because they're actually a floridian species that spends most of its time in like the underbrush that's like solid heat so mm. they can both move inside a high high humidity and also desert is tight root like but it's like sand endemic mm. they're so adapted too yeah do you have a cool spider fact or like any bug fact You've given us so many tonight, but we always I know. ask everyone for a little spider fly. Okay, I, I do have one. This is going to be more for... It actually, it's, it's technically for true spiders and jumping spiders. You know how they, they fill their pedipalps with, with sperm to impregnate the females? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. They don't technically have to do that. They technically could just do all natural like humans do face-to-face. The reason they don't do that is because her mouth is right there <laughs> and it would and it would be right in biting height. The reason they do that is because the ones that figured out that they can just hold on to it and shove it like a pocket didn't die. Did you see my video of my shorty where he's like sucking on he's his pelt? Grinding palps? on you? <laughs> yeah. Do you just think that's what that was? I don't know. I, I, I think that's <laughs> interesting because he didn't. I mean, he kind of kept doing that but then he wasn't dancing that would be he danced, I mean, that would be dope okay. he danced afterwards so i was like what are you doing with your palps man because it seemed like he was priming them for something maybe then maybe he was trying to hint you he's like i'm ready dude you got a pair of <laughs> like i'm dying here like help <laughs> but there's no pockets here <laughs> it's really i think my phone lens but i'm gonna just pretend that it's me but that would be super cute if he was trying to pair with your phone lens i think he is he sees himself that's so cute. Not a parent. No. He's got shit on his ass. I can't get it. That that won't stop him from parent. I don't know, man. It's hard to meet chicks. So Juice, how can people find you online? You can check out my website and juicesarthropods.com. I have an Instagram at, at juicesarthropods. And then I have a YouTube channel at youtube.com slash at juicesarthropods. If you like to see pros and cons and maybe disagree with my views on mantids and some of the other species. <laughs> but I, you know, I try to do a lot of about education and, and obviously I have a business, but I'm equally passionate about just teaching things to people and trying to help them love more creatures. Yay. I love that as about you and you're so inspiring and i'm excited to get into roaches which is never something i thought i would say but <laughs> i'm gonna keep you all updated on the process she's not going to tarantulas right away roaches, roaches. Are the next <laughs> hissing cockroach time oh my god people love oh. pets i i you, I could go on for days about hissing cockroaches but next time i see you lauren i have some males that are the best pets they okay so this is my pitch right three years lived they're perfect for children if the bug doesn't like what your kid's doing it will yell at them it can <laughs> it it can climb plastic and glass but it eats the exact same things you do they're very hardy like 100 percent great for handleability will not take any extra costs for you and they are the best pets on the planet and they can't fly and they can't do anything negative so next time i see you i will okay. bring one of my mail i will buy I one will. from you <laughs> here's the best part they're like three dollars they're the cheapest <laughs> pet on the planet <laughs> they cost the closure too for it because we, we got you covered i have spider enclosures i don't have what you have so bring me one okay. and i'm excited and I'm excited to maybe get other people into cockroaches too. <laughs> You'll be the biggest cockroach fan within a one week, I promise. Uh, They're amazing pets. Charlie, you know that? 
you might get a cockroach. <laughs> Don't tell Dado yet. <laughs> He's like, oh, I'm telling him. <laughs> He's immediately going to tell on you. <laughs> Don't just try to leave. Thank you so much. This was so much fun having you on. And I will see you uh, this next week on Friday. Yes. I mean, Saturday. I- Sunday. I will see you Saturday. Thank you guys so much for having me. This has been an absolute blast and I wish you all the best and hope you make a ton of money at your next expo as well. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Charlie. Thank you, Juice. We'll see you guys ah! next week. <laughs> oh man, that's exciting. That's a goodbye. Okay, bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs>